Good afternoon, this is Mr. Larson speaking, and we're going to design a night table on Google SketchUp. And this is a project I've done for about uh, 15 years now with students, and we're just going to try a different way of designing it using SketchUp, using more of a component-based project style. So here we go. We're going to go with our rectangle tool to start with. So R is the shortcut. We're going to start at our origin just because it's a lot easier to keep track of. Um, our <clears throat> placement on the axes. And we're gonna start by showing the width of our side piece and thickness of our side piece. So we're gonna go with 15 and three quarters by three quarters of an inch thick. We make this out of plywood typically, birch plywood. So we're gonna go three quarters, comma, 15, space three quarters. If you know it's 0.75, you can do 0.75 instead of three quarters. Our default is inches. We don't have to put our inches symbol in. Next, we're going to get our push-pull tool. So P for push-pull. We're going to click on that surface. We're going to drag it vertically. And we want this piece to be 19.5 inches tall. There we go. We made a piece now, so we're going to make it a component. So we get our space bar, get our select arrow, triple click it, and then type G to create a component. You can call it something if you want. <clears throat> you don't have to. There we go. Next, we're going to lay out where this other side piece is going to go. And we could just do some math and copy it over, but easier is just to use our tape measure tool selected on the outside of our piece, which should be in line with that axis. And we're gonna move over. The width of our night table is gonna be 19 inches. So 19, enter. Now we're gonna get our move tool and hit control for copy. You should end up with a little plus symbol by the move tool. Where it's gonna intersect with that piece is gonna be this outside bottom edge. So that's where we're going to click on it and drag it over and place it. Next thing, we're gonna work on our top. So our top piece is uh, going to go across the top here, and we're going to get our rectangle tool. We're going to draw a rectangle from corner to corner, and then we're going to pull this up. Now, this is a little bit different way of doing it, but so push-pull again. We're going to do rabbits and dados for our joinery on this project. So our total height of the project should end up being 20 inches. We're going to, since the sides were 19 and a half, we're going to pull this up one half inch, so 0.5 or one divided by two. And there we go. We're not quite done yet. Um, what we're going to do next then is we're going to pull it down one quarter of an inch. And you'll see that some overlap there, but that's okay. So one quarter or 0.25, hit enter. And <clears throat> there we go. Now we're going to make that a component. Even though we're not done editing it yet, we're going to select it all, type G, and we can call it a top if we really want. And we're going to say, okay. Next, we need to mark out where our shelves are going to go. Now we're not done with these pieces yet, but you'll see. So we're going to get a tape measure tool. We're going to create some guides going from the inside of that side and up vertically. We're going to start off with two and a half inches up, so 2.5. From that point, we're going to go up another three quarters, then we're gonna go up another nine inches. And we don't need this one, but let's put another one up three quarters to show the thickness of our top shelf. So these are marking out our shelf locations. We're gonna get a rectangle tool. We're going to make a rectangle from that point to that point, and from there to there. And we're gonna get our push-pull tool, and we're gonna pull that shelf across to the other side, like so. So this looks kind of neat, but our joinery is not quite done here yet, and we haven't made the shelves a component. I'm just going to hold off on doing that for a moment, because even though we can't see the end of this piece, we're actually going to pull this out one quarter of an inch into our sides, because that's going to be the depth of our um, shell, of our dado joints. Dado joints should be one third of the thickness of your material. And so we're using three quarters. So one quarter of an inch is going to be 
the depth of our dados. And we could have probably just made one shelf here and then copied it afterwards. But yeah, this is going to work. <clears throat> Actually, that is right. So I'm just going to triple click this one. I'm going to delete it. We'll come back. I'm just going to make things easier. We're going to make this a component now. So G again, after selecting it all, say, OK, we're going to copy it down. And so move control or copy it from an intersecting point, which will be, and you see it's trying to snap to that outside edge. We don't want it at that outside edge. We want it right here. And we're going to zoom in again. Remember wherever you put your core, point your cursor, that's where it's going to zoom to. And we're going to copy it straight down to that point. Perfect. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have to edit our sides. So where these dados enter our sides, we don't have a groove for that yet. And you see, we've got this ugly line showing right there, and that's not how it's supposed to look in the end. So we're going to double click, or you can right click and edit component. We're going to draw a rectangle. So R, basically showing this quarter inch by three quarter inch groove. And then we're going to go push pull, and we're going to push this all the way back in line with that end. We're going to hit spacebar, and we're also going to have to delete a line afterwards. Now, one thing that you might notice, though, is that since these are components, it's copying and doing the same to the other side. Well, there's an easy way to fix that, and we'll show you that in a minute. While we're still editing this one, we're going to repeat that same process on here. So we're going to get a rectangle tool. We're going to draw our line, our rectangle in, we're going to push that back. And we want to make sure that we're pushing it back, even with this back edge. And come on, little fella. There we go. That's what we want to push. So push. Click on that surface. Push it back, even with that back edge. There we go. And we still have that line there, so that's going to be a bit of an issue. And uh, oh, maybe it's not. Nope. Perfect. That actually worked the way it was supposed to. Um, not that I'm surprised. We're going to also then take this piece because we have our dado groove on the wrong side. Simple fix. All I need to do is scroll down, right click on it, scroll down, go to flip along. We're going to flip it along components red because we're along the red axes. So there's the red axes. We're flipping it along that red axes. And now our dado grooves are complete. We have one last set of joinery to fix up here, and that's our um rabbit joints and rabbits are basically the same thing just at the end of a board we're going to do the same process we're going to get our rectangle tool we're going to while editing the top piece we're going to push this back even with that back edge and we're going to move on over so pan on over to the other side pan with me there we go orbit a little rectangle draw a rectangle in and we're going to push that all the way back in line with that corner close our component by just clicking off into space and there's our basic shell of the cabinet the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to put a back on it and so on the back and really we could have just done the other side but that's okay and control shift e brings everything into view it's a zoom extents we're then going to get a rectangle tool um, oh, actually, before our rectangle tool, we're going to get our tape measure tool. We're going to set a guideline across right at this point and right at the bottom of the shelf as well. Bottom of the bottom shelf, top of the top shelf. This is going to give us some points where we're going to connect our quarter inch backer. So we're going to use quarter inch plywood as a backer on this. Since the rest of it is a component, um, our component pieces, this will not attach itself to it and it'll allow us to then pull it out one quarter of an inch. And anytime we make a piece, we get a component, G, say OK. Once again, you could label it, don't have to. And there's our completed project beyond dimensioning. So our dimensions, we're going to be printing this off and we want to be able to build using it. So we're going to get our dimension tool out, the one with the three on it. And we're going to dimension, always a good idea to dimension at the back edge so that your numbers aren't getting in the way of the project. We're also going to turn off our guides 
And you can just go to your glasses on the right and you're going to uncheck the guides. We don't need those axes anymore either. So we're going to uncheck that and close that up. So we're going to continue on then with our dimension tool and we've dimensioned our side piece. We could dimension the total height and if we want to, that's fine. We only need to dimension, we only want to dimension whatever we need in order to be able to build the project. We want to keep it nice and neat by doing that as well. Because if you have too many dimensions, it gets kind of messy and hard to read. There we go, we're showing our overall width and thickness. Oh, come on, you fella. There we go, start this edge, go back and snap. There we go. So that's looking pretty neat so far. We've shown our measurements for that part. We want to know then, of course, either what the width of our piece is. That's probably going to be the easiest because we want to know when we're cutting this. Um, we're going to assume that if we dimension the thickness of our material to be three quarters of an inch, that everyone will know that dados and rabbits, at least in my class, should know by now that uh, they're one third of the thickness. So we're going to right click on this because that was really hard to read. We're going to change the text position to either outside start or outside end. This makes it a little easier to read. Okay. Now we need to show the locations of our shelves. So we're going to go up, over. And like I did say, you want to have these where you can see it typically at the back edge. But the issue would be that I want to be able to print this in an isometric view. And this is going to get too crowded back here. So we're going to have our shelf locations dimensioned at the front, but um, where it can be seen. 12 and a quarter. And we've got our three quarter inch material here. We don't need to dimension that because we already know that our material is three quarters of an inch. And then the last thing that we have, of course, is our back piece. And that may just have to be printed in a separate view in order to be able to see that. <clears throat> there we go, we got 10 and a half, and our width, oh, let's do this along the bottom, I guess. Do we need to show our width? Probably not, because we can see that that's the full width of the project, but since we're printing it in a different view, we'll just do that. And it might be hard to read this, so another way of adding a little note or dimension on this, we're just going to use this tool, and we're going to point to it, and we're just going to say that back... one quarter inch. So we've now dimensioned it. If we want to, we could show our, we could paint it up and just use our paint bucket. If we want to go with some wood colors. I mean, makes the most sense. You can always edit your colors however you want. We're just keeping it simple for this. Since they're components, it'll paint the whole piece of the component. And there's our finished product. We go to print this. Um, we're going to just do a go here. We're going to go to our print icon. I kind of like having a white background for it. It's a little easier to read. We also then <clears throat> likely want to have it landscape, just have it fit better. And you can also adjust your view. So if it's a little bit small on the screen you can just zoom in here you can also pan down get it centered and when you're ready then you can hit print pdf and then we can also just from here orbit around and do a print of our back view as well and print pdf and then we can also print that off if we have a, access to a printer well that's our night table project i hope you enjoyed that and We'll uh, try some more coming up. Stay tuned to my channel and we'll see some more projects.